Whether it's God, the human soul, or life after death, faith is often based on a belief in the supernatural. But is it logical and reasonable to believe that the supernatural does indeed exist? Or is it the spiritual equivalent of a fairy tale? I mean, that is a perfect topic for a debate on faith under fire. And so on one side, we have Dr. J.P. Moreland, philosophy professor at Talbot Theological Seminary in La Mirada, California, and author of the book, Scaling the Secular City. And on the other side is Edward Tabash, an attorney, a skeptic, and a member of the board of directors for the Council of Secular Humanism. Okay, J.P., since you're sort of making the affirmative case here, what evidence do you have that the supernatural is real? Lee, in the last 25 years, the evidence for the supernatural has been so overwhelming that the leading defender of atheism, intellectual philosopher Tony Flew, for 60 years has been the top defender of atheism, has this last year become a believer in the supernatural and in God. Really? And the reason he has done so has not been because he wanted the supernatural to be true, but because of the evidence. Three strands of evidence were most important for flu. First, we now know according to the Big Bang Theory that the natural world of space, time, and matter has begun to exist at some time in the past. And as Ted Koppel said on Nightline, bangs have bangers. The second piece of evidence that we have is the fact that there are at least 50 constants of nature. A constant of nature would be like the mass of a proton, the charge of an electron, the force of gravity in the universe. If any one of these 50, uh, much less all 50, were different, larger or smaller, on the order of a billionth of a percentage point, there would be no life whatsoever in the universe. And as theoretical physicist Paul Davies said, it looks like the dice were rigged in advance for life to appear. Bangs have bangers and rigged dice have riggers. Finally, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence is a search that bases its uh, work on the assumption that information can only come from an intelligent mind. But the number one discovery of 20th century biology was that the thing that constitutes living organisms is libraries filled with information. The thing that makes something living is that it's pregnant with information, and information comes from an informer. So Anthony Flew and a number of others are becoming believers in the supernatural because of the evidence. Uh, uh, bangs have bangers, information has an informer, and rigged dice has a rigger. And you're saying this information is found in DNA, is that correct? It is found in DNA and the genetic code, which is information rich, information bearing. Okay, Eddie, that's a good statement of the evidence. What is your position? There's absolutely no evidence in our physical universe, nothing empirically amenable to us, nothing that can be scientifically ascertained that in any way shows that there is anything beyond and above the universe that's not a part of the universe, and there's nothing that shows that there is any force in the universe that can violate the laws of nature. The problem with claims of the supernatural which is equivalent with claims of the miraculous, is all such claims bear witness against themselves because they claim in an actually contradictory fashion to violate the very known laws of nature for which there is no violation other than discovering a new law which itself is naturalistically grounded. Let me give you the best example. For instance, in biblical times, people thought that mental illness was the product of demonic possession. So Jesus supposedly did exorcisms. But we know today that mental illness is the product of a chemical imbalance in the brain, uh, other naturalistic causes. So every time that something has been in history attributed to a supernatural underpinning, advance in science and empirical investigation has always demonstrated that that's not true. There's also another major problem with claims of the supernatural, and that is involved in the notion of divine hiddenness. If there really is a banger, and if there really is a dice thrower, such a being should not then again play dice with our knowledge and should be more directly amenable to direct experience. But we have no corresponding evidence of the types of miracles that allegedly occurred in the Bible happening okay. today. If I'm just a natural object subject to the laws of nature, then all of my behavior is completely determined by my genetic structure of my body and by my environmental inputs. That means that I have absolutely no responsibility for my actions of murder or child molestation. Okay. It is only if I am a transcendent supernatural being. That is, it is only if I have a soul that's different from my body that is invisible and a part of the supernatural world that can act transcendent to that supernatural world. Every time I act freely, 
I inject power and force into my body and into the natural world. It's only if that is true that there can even be a, 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 a discipline called okay, law. Okay, okay, let's see. My response is to bring it back to what we are debating. We're debating, is there a supernatural? JP was trying to bootstrap the supernatural just because human beings have free will. Once again, what he has failed to do is to draw any kind of connection, to draw any kind of connection between proof of the supernatural. He's taking a natural phenomenon such as human consciousness, such as human awareness, which the overwhelming weight of the evidence shows to be a byproduct, an epiphenomenon of the brain, and he's saying because of that, because of that, we have to say that there's a transcendental underlying force, otherwise we wouldn't have free will. There's absolutely no connection between our ability as sentient beings to make choices and having to say that those choices are contingent upon an underlying supernatural order for which there is no evidence. Okay, let's get JP's response. Yeah, uh, he misunderstands, first of all, bootstrapping is a philosophical trick to label my argument with a bad name. It's not bootstrapping, it's a cumulative case argument. Secondly, he failed to understand the argument. I wasn't arguing that there has to be a God because I exercise freedom. I was arguing based on Eddie's own definition of what it means to be a part of the natural world that because I am free, and by the way, he said my actions are mere epiphenomena, that means they're totally determined by the brain, which grants my point. I'm arguing that because I am not determined, but I actually am free, that my own self or my own ego is a part of the supernatural world. But, but the second thing is that the human self or soul, because we have free will, transcends the laws of nature and acts miraculously by interrupting and intervening in those laws every time we act freely. Third, there have been miracles that have been verified in the history of the world, including today. Jesus of Nazareth's career and his resurrection can be verified by any standard means of historical investigation. And today there are thousands of healings that are happening all over the world in the enterprise of the Christian church.